Yep, my most comfortable gas mask. Now, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to hear this one, so if it's not very clear, I won't wear it for all that long in the stream. But yeah, it's out of all my masks, this is by far my most comfortable mask, because it makes a really good seal around my chin. So I'm just going to loosen the strap slightly, because I don't need it on all this tight. So let's just get it to the comfortable tightness, or it will stay on all right, but not pull up my face. There we go. So let me just clear any notifications on my phone. There we go. Hello. So I've got a coffee, but um, I'm waiting for that to cool down, so I might as well wear the mask while I wait for the coffee to cool down. Then when the coffee's a good temperature, I'll um, take the mask off and start drinking coffee. This is the Forshida F2 A4. Um, this is definitely one of the best gas masks in my collection. My favourite still the Avon CT12, but this one is a bit more comfortable, and I think you get a slightly better field of vision, maybe? But regardless, it's a very good mask. The only thing that lets this down is it doesn't have a very good voice diaphragm. But this is a mask Sweden designed in the 1990s when they looked at the S10 and they said we have to have a mask a bit like the S10. So if you look at it, you can see a lot of similarities in the S10. It's just got triangular rather than around eyepieces. And the inside's a bit more comfortable, but otherwise it's very, very similar. So, as the name suggests, if you've got questions, ask away. But check the FAQ to see if there's a question in that. Don't forget to like the stream or dislike it if you really um, want to dislike it. And as you can see from the Teespring thing below, there's merchandise for the channel now. So if you're interested in any of that, check it out. Yeah, for some reason, caffeine combined with painkillers is meant to make it more effective. Because there's quite a lot of actually pre-made tablets you can buy that combine um, caffeine with paracetamol. What I have as painkillers, I have this regular paracetamol if I'm in very minor pain. Uh, in fact, it's going to be like a drug stream now. So yeah, paracetamol if... Um, Yeah, so paracetamol just for if I have a regular, like, headache, um, or minor pain, because paracetamol is not that effective as a painkiller. Cocodamol, which is um, paracetamol with codeine, which is one of the strongest painkillers you can buy over the counter. That's for more serious pain, if it focuses. I don't think it's going to focus, but... Yeah, so that's Cocodamol. And then, what I have for more serious pain... Uh, ...is obviously this. But this is under prescription I get this. You can't just normally get it from the doctor. Because I'm chronically ill, I can get this. Codeine phosphate. Um, which is like one-tenth of the strength of morphine. But I try and not use that unless I really have to, because obviously you can build a tolerance up to it and it can also cause addiction. That's why I'd rather just take paracetamol if I'm ever in, you know, a condition where, um, you know, if I, if I can get away, I always use the least powerful painkiller or I don't use a painkiller, but because I'm chronically ill, unfortunately, uh, that's something I have to do. No, I've not played Battlefield 1 or Battlefield 5. And I don't have a bug out bag set up, I really should do it. Previous points I've had them set up, but at the moment I bought a new bag to set one up, and I've just not got around to it yet. Evening, Richard. But I can't actually take aspirin or ibuprofen, because, um... If you have ulcerative colitis, that can make you seriously ill or kill you, because um, of how it reacts with your body. 
and unfortunately I found that out the hard way where I hadn't been told properly when I was first diagnosing UC. Uh, so when I took some ibuprofen after um, like some minor surgery, uh, it made my condition far worse. It's because I put a load on Premiere so you can see what videos are coming up on what days. Because a lot of the time people um, seem to forget when my videos go live or they say they don't get the notifications. So what I've done is I've put a load of the videos, not all of the ones coming up, because I didn't want to spam people's sub boxes. And I've put a load of them on premieres, and then what I'm going to do is when I get to the end of the phase where all the current ones that are on premiere come out, I'm going to put every free videos, like the next free videos, always on premiere, if that makes sense. So you'll see one week's worth of videos, and then at the end of the week I'll put the next week's on premiere, so you know what days they're coming out. It's caused a bit of argument, because some people don't like them being on Premiere, but I think YouTube will promote them a little bit more if I do that, because they want to encourage people to use the Premiere function. So I'm just going to try that for a while anyway, if people really hate it, I'll go back to the old method. But it's actually easier in the video manager if I've got them set up on Premiere to see which days they go live. Because it actually sorts them by the order they go live, not the order I uploaded them. I've not played Metro Exodus, no. We'll have to see, because I've tried both before, but when I've had things on Premiere before, it's not worked out too badly. Oh, thank you very much, Hotshot. Have you got any questions you want to ask? I'm just playing around with the plastic valve on the bottom of the mask. What if I can remove it? I think it's like a sort of plug. Ah, I can pull that off. Well, funny enough, this particular mask, I reckon that can come out actually. This particular mask they put on the cover of the remake of The Crazies, I think it was. Like as a kind of concept, not concept art, but you know, that kind of thing for that, where, um,. So what I think this is, is where they've had the drinking tube on the military model, and it's like they've disconnected it for the civilian one. I might be completely wrong with that, but might might have a completely different other function, but it just doesn't really connect to anything on the inside. That's why I'm sort of curious why it's there. Unless it's a thing designed to collect your sweat or something and then it can somehow get out of there without compromising the seal of the mask, I don't know. Um, well, in the British military, they call them respirators. But in, in the US military, they're called a protective mask. Some nations still use the term gas mask. The reason I like the term gas mask is everybody knows what you mean if you say a gas mask. Whereas... Um, if you say, um, you know, like the thing, if you say protective mask or respirator, some people get a bit confused. Uh, these particle filters are fine. I'm not a massive fan of a lot of Scott masks, but the actual filters are absolutely fine. Especially these, because these are just really cheap P3 filters or P100 filters if you're in America, which, you know, are just designed to catch pretty much any kind of dust. So this is the filter I put on a lot if I just ever need to use a mask to do anything with insulation or, um, you know, do some dusting, I just stick this filter onto a mask um, and use it for that. Uh, hot shot, alright, um, so you in your art class you need to find something to draw. Um, you Could you draw a guy in um, an NBC suit with a gas mask or like I know you said you can't draw, draw a gun, but could you have, um, like, a Soviet tank crewman with the MM1 mask on um, and the tank crewman's helmet? Something like that? Would that be allowed? Alright, cool. Yeah. Um, I've not seen um, the new Chernobyl thing. I know there's the trailer for the HBO Chernobyl TV series, and I'm definitely going to check that out when that comes out. But I don't know when that actually comes out. So 
So what's that like, some extreme kind of stinging metals? Yeah, well, it doesn't su surprise me, though, it's in Australia, because it seems absolutely everything that would um, make you uh, feel bad or whatever, um, or poison you, is in Australia. That just seems to be what Australia does. I'm glad I could help. And thank you for the donation as well, because, you know, I appreciate it. it. Like I said, I bought the new webcam recently, so... I can pretty much say any of the stream money I get goes towards, you know, stuff like the webcam. So I've got a good webcam now and a good microphone, which, you know, is perfect, really. Right, my coffee's still a bit hot to drink, so I'll put the mask on for a bit longer. So people go, ooh, what's that? This looks interesting. There's a stream of a gas mask on. So I'll fully undo the bottom two straps, actually. Then I can put my chin in, pull this over. Push it against my face, tighten the bottom two straps, and that's it. It's done a really solid weld to my face. Actually, you need to tighten these two straps ever so slightly. And top two slightly as well. There we go. I really wish there was a military version of. I know there is a military version, but I mean, it, like that would actually turn up on the surplus market more commonly. Let me have a quick look for Shida. Gas mask, any results? Only the version I've got on. Uh, what if I type in for Shida respirator? No, only the civilian model. What if I type in, I have to look up the spelling. Skeets mask 90. Does any of those come up if I put them into eBay? No. Sadly not. Oh well, guess I'm not getting uh, the military version anytime soon. But yeah, the uh, the military version of it's called that, and I'd really love to get the actual military version, not just this civilian model. But sadly... Uh, right, Jamie, it really depends on the panoramic lens in question. For the most part, I prefer lenses like this, just because I find with two lenses you know, you can see quite well and you only get a little bit of ghosting in between the lenses, which isn't a problem. With a panoramic lens, it has to sit quite close to your face, and it has to be relatively flat. If a panoramic lens is too curved, it will distort your vision quite horribly. If it's too far from the face, you actually get a really bad field of view. Also, with a panoramic mask, you actually need the oral nasal cup to be made out of a clear material, because if the oral nasal cup isn't made from a clear material, then it defeats the purpose, because you still lose loads of your vision to the oral nasal cup. Uh, I'd say the PMG2 and the SHMS are the best Soviet military masks. Dominic. So yeah, uh, out of all the panoramic lens masks I've got, I'll show you my favourite one. This Scott M97 is definitely my favourite out of all the panoramic masks. It's actually very similar to this mask, actually, in terms of like, the rubber it's made from. It's very comfortable. Um, but this isn't too curved, the panoramic lens. And as you can see, it's got a clear oral nasal cup in it. So it means when you're looking out... That doesn't distort your vision as much, because you actually can partially see through the oral nasal cup. So let me just put that one on quickly. So that's this mask on. The voice diaphragm on this one is a bit vibrating, so that's the only real complaint I have for this mask. But otherwise, this is a pretty damn good mask, actually. Uh, that you can't use the mask to protect yourself. I mean, it's obviously their decision if you're under 18, but... You're not really hurting anyone with the masks, are you? You're learning about history, which is always a good thing. 
Oh, well, the Polish MUA is worth more than the GP5, so I suppose that's good, unless you really wanted actually to get the GP5. Uh, I don't actually have much web gear or stuff like that, that's the reason there's not any videos on my channel of it for the most part. Uh, that sounds pretty horrible, but <laughs> yeah, um, I wouldn't really wipe my ass with stinging nettles either, and they're nowhere near as bad. So far, there's not much on my list of masks to get. What I do is I just opportunistically buy them if I spot them at a good price. So, um, for example, I look on eBay every now and then. If I spot a mask that's well priced and I don't have it and I think it looks cool, then I go for it. But if the mask's too expensive, I don't. And I find that's a good way of actually, um, you know, shopping for surplus because you don't ever waste too much money. I'm pretty frugal like that, to be honest. I don't think, Jamie, you're going to get any gas masks that work well with glasses in terms of just putting your glasses on with the mask because of how the seals work. The only things that would work for that are the um, ones that work for positive pressure system, so it just loosely fits around your neck because then you can wear glasses underneath the hood. Or um, the ones where you can get optical inserts, like a lot of military masks that you put optical inserts in, but you'd actually have to get the right optical inserts for the mask, which can be pretty difficult. Uh, the CT-12 is still my favourite, yeah, because out of all the masks I've got, it's the best. But as I was saying, this is probably like my second favourite mask, um, the Forshida F2 A4. Because this is actually a bit more comfortable than the CT12, it's just um, the voice diaphragm on it's not as good. Um, you know, there's a couple of other things where it's better in some ways, not as good in others, so... You can only put the filter on one side of it as well, and it doesn't even have a secondary speech diaphragm there. It's just a hard piece of plastic. The SHMS is my favourite Russian or Soviet mask. Uh, you can't email me um, on here, I don't give that out. Yeah, thanks Mike, don't forget to like the stream. Do you want to tell you what, I'll twist this round so the drinking tube's not too close to my face. What do you mean, like kukris? I think they're pretty cool. Alright, thanks everyone. Tell you what. I have some coffee now. It's definitely better having shorter hair with the masks because it doesn't get in the way. Ah, good. Did you just take some paracetamol, Mike? Was that what we did? Just coffee and paracetamol. Yeah, the good thing is I don't think you can actually build up an immunity to paracetamol from everything I've read. Um, like, the problem is with stuff like codeine and some of the stronger painkillers is your body actually builds a tolerance to them. So that's one of the things I have to find I do as well, is... One of the reasons I actually still buy paracetamol, even though I can get much stronger things on prescription, is it means I can just get the paracetamol, and sometimes I'll just try and manage a couple of days only taking that, so when I take codeine again, it's more effective. Oh, the actual Gurkha knife's name, proper name is the Kukri, like K-U-K-R-Y. Um, as in natural landmarks, or like man-made ones? Yeah, that'd be cool. Um... I mean, you can obviously put coffee in a drinking canteen for a respirator and then drink it that way. But, um, yeah, if, if there was actually a way you could just mod it to connect to a conventional mug, that would be brilliant. Well, I quite like Warwick Castle. Uh, Warwick and Dover Castle, I think, are very good, like, castle, like, man-made things. Um, you know, like, cool, they're very good preserved original castles, so they're good. Um... 
natural landmarks. What are some natural? I mean, I always like the coast, but you know, every country that's on the ocean has a coast, so that's not anything specific. I'm trying to think if there's a particular area of the coast I really like. I actually really like, um, what's it called? Um, Portlandville? Portland, that's near Weymouth. It's like an outcrop. I like both ARs and AKs, obviously being in the UK I can't really own either. Um, but it depends which model of AK. Like, I think an AR-15 would be better than an AKM, but I think the AK-74 in some ways is better than an AR-15. I know the AR-15 is slightly more accurate, but I do like AKs as a platform just because of how versatile they are and how easy they are to use and maintain even if you're not really into guns. Uh, I'm not a communist. I wouldn't send people to the gulag if they don't like my stuff. They, they're just free just not to watch my stuff, aren't they? My favourite German gas mask. Um, out of all of them, probably the Volksmask 37. Uh, out of like the military ones, the M65 probably. The M2000 they've got now looks really cool, but I've not seen any for a decent price, so I've not picked those up. But speaking of buying a GP5, if you are interested, there is merch down below. Um, that you can see on the Teespring account, and um, next thing I've asked Bart to draw when he does some more drawing, because he did the Mark V drawing, is to do a GP5 one. But I did, because people ask for GP5 stuff, I did put a picture of a GP5 on a mug um, with yellow Soviet sort of text. Um, so if, if you wanted a Soviet themed mug, you could uh, get it via capitalism. My favourite German camouflage is Flectarm. No, I don't have a US Army rucksack. So yeah, when my new mug arrives, I will have a branded mug um, with my merch on it when it's delivered, rather than using another mug in the streams. Uh, or a Czech M10 shirt that's like a rage-inducing one. I'd rather not say the exact area I live in, Maxi Boy, just because I get weird threats from people online. But, I'm, I, let, I, let's say I'm within 50, 60 miles of London. I suppose I, I did get my friend to take a photo of me, uh, Bart, take a photo of me wearing the M17 from several angles, and he's going to do an M17 one, because I do aesthetically like cheek filter masks, I just don't think they're very functional. But I, I suppose we could have a shirt with bad gas masks on that could have an M10 with the cheek filters falling out, um, a GSR falling apart. Yeah, I like the PMG too, I recommended it earlier in the stream. If I had a choice between wearing a GP5 or a GP5M, I'd always go with a GP5M because it's got the speech diaphragm on it so people can hear you. But I prefer the SHMS to the GP5M just because you can use scopes with it. Um, I've done videos specifically on budget masks, Jamie. Um, but for that price range, you could probably get a Draeger M65... Maybe an Israeli M15 or 4A1, depending on how much you can get one for with shipping or if any surplus stores have got them in. Um, an SHMS, a GP5M, there's quite a lot of choices. Polish MP5, as long as you get one in good condition where the lens hasn't like cracked. That's cool. Nice to meet you as well. No, I'm not really interested in Metrexes. I'll get it when it's on sale at some point, but I think I've even got in the FAQ now um, down below that I'm not a fan of the Metro series because people keep asking me, why don't you play Metro all the time? And I don't want something that's exclusive to the Epic Store because I'm not installing that on my PC. Uh, I've seen videos of Far Cry New Dawn, but I haven't liked any of the Far Cry since Far Cry 3. Oh, actually, I like Blood Dragon. That was good. Uh, I'd say FN Scar, because then I'd like the Scar H, you know, in 762. Real NATO.
Well, I think it's bad a lot of them got away with stuff, but at the same time, Operation Paperclip was done basically by both the US and the Soviets did a similar thing. Both sides basically used Nazis to um, further their research. And America also used Japanese war criminals research and let them go um, from Unit 731 for more information on biological and chemical weapons. So I think it's bad that people who do really evil things can escape justice like that. But then again, without Via von Braun, whatever his name is, Wolfe von Braun, I can never pronounce his name, Via von Braun, um, however his name's pronounced, the US would have never gone to the moon. So, you know. I'm not sure what the HK-417 is without looking, but the G3 is fairly old, so I'm assuming the 417 is a more modern, like, reliable gun. And I've been playing a lot of Fallout 3 recently, weirdly enough, um, but I've got quite a lot of mods installed. So um, I've got one that, like, makes the rifles a lot more, more accurate and, you know, increases the damage of every gun, so it plays a lot more like Stalker, where you creep around a lot more, you know, and then kill people very quickly in firefights, rather than it being inaccurate bullet sponges. Alright, see you, Jamie. Well, I don't live too close to the ocean. I still have to drive a hundred odd miles to get to the closest bit of, to the sea to me. But yeah, I like um, I like the ocean. If I preferably could live anywhere, I'd like to live on the coast. The thing I do like about being at the seaside or whatever is that. Um, the salt air seems to prevent my asthma from ever being bad, and my um, hay fever never bothers me at the coast. Um, I've done a couple of videos like that already, Snowman White, but because I can never make something very good, I've never bothered and I'm crap at making stuff. I'm sure I've been to Brighton at some point, but not recently. Last time I went to the coast, which was a couple of weeks ago, because I took my car down there to give it a bit of a further trip, I went to um, Hengelsbury Head. No, nope. the only problems I'd ever have with getting masks are if you're trying to get US ones, because they're export banned from the US. Um, but in terms of eBay, you can literally just go on eBay and buy loads and loads of masks from UK sellers. Um, I've got a Dacia Sandero, which is one of the cheapest cars you can buy in the UK, and it's actually very cheap to run and quite reliable, so I'm very happy with it. Okay, yeah, then definitely the 417. Because pretty much, it's like if you said to me, what would I rather have, an FN Fow or an FN Scar H? It's like, as much as I love the Fow, I know the Scar H is a better gun, because it's, you know, more modern, and there's a lot that's been learnt about firearm development in the meantime. So same thing with a G3, or, you know, like the modern equivalent of it. In terms of, like, I suppose free-floating barrels and all the other kind of stuff they do on firearms now, you get a much better gun. Yeah, I've been I've been to Bobbington Tank Museum, if that's the one you mean, near Weymouth, the one that's got, like, the Tiger II there and everything. Oh, it depends. I mean, I really like the S10, but I don't know if, from the 80s if there's any masks that were better from it. Yeah, I mean, I, I just like my Dacia because the problem was I used to have a Golf, and the Golf was a really good car, don't get me wrong, because obviously German cars are nice and everything, but because it was an old Golf, it was getting to the stage where every year it just keep, you know, costing too much money to keep on the road. I was paying, like, you know, 500 to 2,000 pounds a year on parts and things to keep it running, and that's ignoring fuel costs and everything else, insurance and all that. Um, so it worked out a lot cheaper to actually just bite the bullet and buy a new car. Um, than it was, you know, and especially if you get something like a Dacia Sandero, because you're not buying it for, like, brand recognition. Um, and I bought a pre-reg one as well, so it only had 50 miles on the clock, because it was essentially a showroom car, a brand new one. But they knocked, like, a grand and a half off the price, just for doing that. So I ended up getting the top-of-the-range version of the Sanderos. But I, I like it because it's primitive enough that you don't have to worry about stuff going wrong on it, because there's not too much to it, but it's still got you know, aircon and stuff like that. It's still got a sat nav built into it, so yeah. Yeah, thank you, Hotshot. I mean, thank you again as well, because you gave me a donation, so I'm very happy about that. Oh, an S10 in the Scottish Regiment.
But yeah, the S10 was the British issue gas mask from somewhere in the 80s up until about 2010, sort of time. Yeah, also masks with drinking tubes. If the drinking tube isn't implemented properly, Snowman, um, that can be a massive failure point in the mask, because there's a lot of masks where air can leak very easily through the drinking tube, which is why I don't like drinking tubes on a mask unless it's really well designed, because it's a weak point of the mask. Right, um, favourite games? I'll tell you what I've been playing a lot of recently and I'm really enjoying. Um, totally accurate battle simulator. I've been playing a lot of Fallout 3 and New Vegas again recently. Um, my favourite old games are Oddworld, Abe's Exodus, Stronghold or Stronghold Crusader, um, and Time Split is Future Perfect. I like the Stalker series as well. Um, I prefer the modern plastic money, just simply because it seems to be more rip and water resistant. So I have to worry less about money getting damaged while it's in my wallet. Um, RAM, I think I got 16. Let me just open up DX Diag. I want to upgrade my PC within the next within this year, as soon as AMD 7 and MCPUs come out. Um, yeah, I've got 16 gig of RAM, but that's DDR3, not DDR4. I don't seem to have much problem with tabs unless I have loads and loads and loads of units on the map at once in like the sandbox mode. I am good, thank you, Alfie. Oh, US Army surplus is cool. It's just a shame that in the UK it's... Well, not the UK, it's just a shame anywhere outside of the US it's export banned, so we can't buy it unless somebody manages to get some into the country. I already answered that one. Um, like I said, the SLR um, is one of my favourite rifles ever through history. Um, but the SCAR, the SCAR H is obviously a lot better if you were having it in a modern scenario. So yeah, in a modern scenario, if you had the choice between a SCAR H and a FAL, then I'd definitely rather have the SCAR H. But in terms of, um, you know, like back during the Cold War period when these rifles were at their best. Yeah, well, it's just meant to be an accurate video, because I just get a, quite pissed off a lot of the disinformation they have in the media and everything, saying, oh, oh, you know, it, it's the knife that makes people kill each other. If, if, if there weren't knives easily available, nobody would stab each other. It depends how you mean by too big. As in what, too heavy, or the length of them's too long? Because in theory, if you had something like the foul, you put a folding stock on it, um, you know, had a slightly shorter barrel, it wouldn't be all that bulky. I mean, yeah, you don't want to navigate through a house with that. I bought from them years ago, um, but that was back when their shipping was a lot more expensive. Um, they do have some very good stuff on there, but it's just generally I find on UK eBay you can find stuff that's, you know, slightly cheaper than there for the same gear. I've played War Thunder before and I got bored of it because I pretty much maxed out all the tech trees. It depends how you mean by pro-gun. I, I explained that in my recent politics video, so maybe watch that one if you want to hear my explanation on that a bit more. I don't actually have any ammo cans or ammo storage boxes other than a couple of magazines that are on like the guns I've got. Um, so I can't really comment on that. Right, I'm good, thank you, Dominic. See ya. Oh yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Well, not funny, but you know what I mean. That how, in a military situation, using tear gas is a war crime. Yet yeah, using it against civilians, um, if the police use it, that's absolutely fine. Apparently. That's cool. Which model katana did you get, Snowman?
I might have a look on their sale again and see if there's anything that jumps out at me. I have told quite a lot of my friends that they've got their closing down sale on there, so a lot of my friends have actually, um... You know, seeing if they want to order anything, whether or what they do, I don't know, but, um... jumping out at me again. That's interesting. Do you know what Model AK that is? And how good a group can it shoot? if you were shooting it from a bench rest or whatever. Alright, cool. That one's, I think, just called the Sohei uh, Natural Wood Katana. But I think all the blades and everything are the exact same, it's just the grips and the scabbards are different. Cool, is that like running things to people, a bus boy? I should know what that is, but for some reason I don't. Let me Google it. Oh, well that's sort of similar to what I do, although I'm a kitchen porter. Um, at the weekends, but yeah, it, that's not too. Sometimes I clear tables as well. Oh, that's good, Richard. If that's going down, um, we already had this question brought up. Um, you basically can't. I've done a video before on gas masks and glasses, but unless you can find the right sort of optical inserts for a mask, you're not going to manage it. I'm afraid is the simple answer. Because you can't put glasses inside a mask without breaking the seal on a mask, except for a very rare couple of masks. Yep, some of my most popular videos are the ones pointing out things like films and games get wrong about um, masks. What about the filter? I saw you make a comment that says filter, but I can't see any other bit of your comment. So if you've made a previous comment, YouTube's not shown it. Well, don't know if I'm the Einstein, I just find them interesting. And when, when I find stuff interesting, I can pick up a lot of knowledge on it. But when, um, you know, stuff I don't find interesting, I can't. It's just, as I said, the thing with respirators is, they're very cheap to buy on the surplus market. So compared to the activated rifles and swords and whatever else, you know, for the price of one of those, I could get maybe ten gas masks. So that's why I end up getting a lot of masks, because I find the history of them interesting. And when I started making gas mask videos, not many people on YouTube did. But I'm definitely not right about everything with gas masks. I still have my own personal opinions. Opinions are not always correct, you know. Sometimes I'll be proven wrong about things. I can disagree with people on certain points, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's actually, uh, maybe I should do a video on this, but there's some stuff about kind of pre-World War One gas mask kind of thing, so I might do a video at some point on, um, you know, some of the evidence in ancient history of similar things, but, um, yeah, they didn't obviously really start off until around World War One when they were designed to protect the wearers from chemical warfare. As far as I'm aware, all the components for a mask gets made and then they get almost clipped together. 
So, let's say something like this. Um, I'd assume that they make all the components and then bits get essentially just pushed into the rubber. You know, the rubber would be moulded essentially and then the bits are connected together. Um, with something like a GP5, you can actually see where the bits are crimped on. So obviously all the bits are produced and then somebody in the factory um, puts a bit of tape on, they crimp the metal on and then it's um, done. No, I haven't seen any in the new Alan Partridge filters. They're not Alan Partridge filters, reading two comments at once, Alan Partridge series. What about the Soviet coffee can filters? Um, well, the Spaz 12 was a really cool um, shotgun, even though I know in real life it wasn't anywhere widely as widely used as in all the movies. Um, the shotgun I really like, because you can get them in the UK, um, obviously with a limited magazine size, is a Benelli Supernova. Um, I'm afraid without seeing more about the filter I wouldn't know. But if it's a pla uh, black plastic filter it could very well be like an S10 filter, an FM12 filter or like any of the kind of filters. If it's plastic I'd assume it's a fairly modern filter so I imagine it'd be quite safe to breathe through because I can't think of many um, old dodgy filters that were made out of plastic you know that would have had asbestos in. Maybe the old Chinese filters but they were grey. Um, modern Chinese filters are metal and stuff anyway, or plastic, but in terms of things like S10 filters and all that, they'd be safe to breathe through. No, I'm, as far as I'm aware, sadly they're not easy to obtain, because I've looked into it myself, because where I've had eye tests and obviously I wear glasses, I know what prescription strength I would need, or very close to, you know, if I was to buy um, an insert for some of the masks, but sadly I've never seen, you know, now and again you'll see particular inserts, but I've never seen like the kits properly, um, let me just search optical insert. Like, you can find a few things um, on eBay, which like 25 quid, which are optical inserts, but I don't know if they'd work, you know, on masks without buying them and trying them, that's the thing. Because each mask generally had like a specific kind of um, clip that, you know, it was like a proprietary kind of clip kind of thing, if that makes sense. Um, let's see, does this one have it in there? I can't actually see it on this particular one. Um, what about this one? See, I think on this one, the optical bit is this bit on here. You can probably see that there's um, like a ridge on the um, nose piece. If that's obvious. Yeah, there it is. If I put my finger behind it, it might be uh, a bit more obvious. Can you see that? Maybe, I don't know, it's quite hard to see. But anyway, the, those are what I think on this mask the glass is connected and connect to. But I think different models of mask use different inserts, so again, that's a problem. I think lots of games and films do things because they look cool, don't they, rather than the practicality of it. Um, well, the difference is between half-face respirators and full-face respirators. So if you have one with the eyepieces on, um, that would be a full-face respirator, or full-face gas mask. The half-face ones, um, obviously just the ones that cover your nose. So if it's ones that cover your nose and mouth, it's not going to protect your eyes, but it's going to protect your lungs. It depends again on the filter on it. Uh, S10 is much better than the S6, although I like both. Um, I cut my hair about once a month or once every two months, and I just buzz cut it myself.
because that's, you know, the cheapest way of doing it. Because you can buy a pair of hair clippers, some decent ones, for like 40, 50 pounds. Even less if you wanted to get ones that aren't brilliant. Um, and if I went to the barbers and just wanted a buzz cut, they'd charge me like 10 to 15 pounds, sort of price range. So yeah, if I'm cutting my hair, let's say, every month or every two months, in one year I'm going to make a saving, and I've had hair clippers now for like four or five years, or I just do it myself. No, I'm not interested in surgical equipment. No, you can look on Google to see what the pound US dollar exchange rate is. I mean, both of them are a decimal currency, you know, where you have a hundred um, of your smaller currency in it to make one of the bigger bits of currency. It's like a hundred pennies in a pound and a hundred cents in a dollar. But um, they're not worth the exact amount, no. A pound's worth slightly more than a dollar. Yeah, Master and Commander, Far Side of the World, very good film. I like quite a lot of like, naval stuff like that. And that's sort of interesting. But yeah, I don't really have any um, interest in getting like any sort of surgeon's equipment, because I have no need for it. But I'd say that I do have a couple of like surgeon's knives where I've done a bit of self-surgery before in the past which I know is not a brilliant idea but I'm not going to go into all the reasons why in this stream but there's been times before where like waiting lists have been too long for something quite minor and I've just done it myself. Um, I generally wear camo trousers quite frequently uh, just because as I've said quite a lot of times they're very good in terms of like pockets or whatever. Camo jackets and coats I only tend to wear when I need to wear them for a utility reason. I try not to wear like camo trousers with a camo jacket at the same time. Uh, I really don't know because I have no interest in collecting World War One masks. I mean, if it's got a certificate of authenticity and all that kind of stuff, then maybe. But that's the reason I'm not really into World War One stuff is the likelihood you get scammed and get um, a replica. Yeah, I've got a fair bit of World War II surplus. Um, it's not a film, is it? It's a TV series, I'm pretty sure. It's made by HBO. I've seen the trailer, though, yeah. Um, I thought it was alright, but they didn't have really enough actors in it, did they? There was lots of bits where the sets looked very empty. Uh, if they're doing training, then they generally do use the old filters, yeah, even though they contain asbestos, but if they're not wearing it for too long, it's not really a problem. Call of Pripyat is my favourite stalker game. Why would he bury a luger in concrete? And I quite like my local Chinese and Indian takeaways, but um, do you mean like chain restaurants or what? Um, I watch lots of like documentaries, but a lot of the time they're not, you know, specific channels that upload those. It's just <clears throat> documentaries either on that've been uploaded to YouTube or, or on other sites. Um, but let's think about what stuff do I watch on YouTube that's not weapon related? Because there is a bit. Let me let me open up um, YouTube and I'll see if it on my recommended if there's any particular kind of stuff that's relevant. There's a couple of politics channels I watch, but I'm not going to start chatting about politics in the stream, so I'm not going to, um, you know, talk too much about that. Um, I 
there's a couple of film analysis channels I like. There's a couple of video game related channels I like, but not very many. Um, 13 o'clock podcast I support on Patreon, and there's like their things like a true crime and sort of mystery podcast. Um, yeah, I'd say that's mostly it. I'm sure if I fought for long enough, I'd think of a load of stuff that, you know, I do watch that's um, kind of, you know, um, not that sort of stuff, but off the top of my head, I can't really think. Uh, any restaurant. Um, well, I wouldn't really consider fast food places restaurants, but I quite like the coffee they do at McDonald's, to be honest. I do like KFC, to be honest. That's Terence Winter, wasn't it, who wrote The Sopranos? I preferred Boardwalk Empire that he wrote to The Sopranos. I like Marpat. It's a good camo pattern. Um, I have a load of East German stuff that would technically make a full military uniform, but I don't like collecting those sort of things, no. I um, mostly have camo pattern stuff. Um, I've only ever been to Nando's once, it was alright, but I don't really get the fuss over it. It was just fairly decent chicken. Some of Lindy Bages videos are quite funny, he's not always correct though. Uh, maybe a Challenger 2, if you mean like a more historical tank, maybe a T-55 or T-72. don't know what that is. Um, I very rarely had Mexican food. Some of it's alright, but there's not that many places in the UK that actually do Mexican food, to be honest. At least not where I am. Don't know what that is either. I don't know. I've never had sushi. Yeah, I've done videos on the GP5, so watch those. But it's alright, provided you can get a filter that fits it. I've already answered that tank question. I'm not going to repeat it. Yeah, the Sherman was probably one of the best tanks of World War II. I've been to Bratislava. That's the only place I've um, been in Slovakia. I was there for a couple of hours, just it was when between going from the Czech Republic to Hungary. No, I don't have an M1 Grand. I've got an M1 Carbine, I've got a Lee Enfield, and I've also got a PPSH down there, um, but I don't have an M1 uh, Grand. Uh, the Hind, so Mi-24, Mi-24. And there's quite a lot of variants of the Hind, so I couldn't tell you what my favourite variant is, but I, in general I like the Hind because it's a heavily armoured attack helicopter that can also transport troops and whatever. 
I don't know, maybe it's because everybody eats food, they find it an easy topic to discuss, I don't know. I've got an RPK, not an AKM. Uh, um, yeah, I find Sam Hyde quite funny, if you mean Million Dollar Extreme. Um, but I've not watched any of his stuff in ages, to be honest. Um, but there's not that many comedy channels I actually watch on YouTube, to be honest. Uh, I don't know, um, World War II Alfie, if it was sharpened or not. I've got no problem with Russians at all. Um, like I said, I don't want to get political. I never want to get political in these streams. But um, our politicians tell us we're not allowed to like Russia. But I personally got no problem with Russians. And I certainly wouldn't use Russia as an excuse for everything like our politicians do. You know, if I could legally do it, then yes. Otherwise, I'm not going to say anything like that, am I? I can't remember if I actually eat an MREs or not. I probably have done at some point, but as I've said before, I've got no interest in buying them because of how expensive they are. Uh, yeah, I like Alo Alo, Heidi High, um, quite a few of those old, like, Faulty Towers, um, you know, all those sort of things. Uh, T-72 would be my favourite Soviet tank. No, I haven't played Battlefield 1 and I haven't played Battlefield 5. I've played Battlefield 2142, 1942, uh, Bad Company 1 and 2, Battlefield 2. Yeah, my local surplus store didn't even have MREs in. And then if I look on eBay, lots of them are like £20 plus. And I'm not paying that for a day's worth of food. Um, more modern revolvers, things like the Colt Python. Um, and you know, like some of the equivalents, like the Smith and Wesson's equivalents of those. Um, in terms of older revolvers, things like the uh, Single Action Army, things like that. I've had a few. Um, I think about four or so so far. But I think I'll probably get a lot more once. Um, uh, what was I was going to say, once a lot more of the actual hand-drawn merch comes out. Uh, I've played the older Call of Duties, I've not played any of the new ones. Well, what I might do, Aiden, is some days I might stream at different times. I don't know if I'll get a chance to stream Friday, but if I do, it will be very early in the day, in the UK time. Um, but generally during the week, if I'm streaming on a Monday or a Wednesday, I know today's a Wednesday, um, there's a good possibility that I might stream earlier in the day. However, saying that tomorrow, I might stream a bit earlier in the day if I get a chance. But saying that, I'm streaming two hours earlier today than I normally stream, so... Depending on what time zone you're in, I guess it might just not work out. Uh, AK-74 is my favourite Russian weapon. I right, just carry on making videos. That's my long-term plans for this channel. Just carry on making videos, what I've been doing for years on it. Um, I've got a piano over there that you can't see from the webcam. But um, I haven't played piano properly in ages. Um, so sadly, um, I can't play as well as I used to be able to play. And that's one of those things where I really wish I actually had more time to just sit down and play it, and I don't. Uh, Hitler was never hit with nerve gas. Hitler was hit with mustard gas, I think it was in World War One. No, I've got the MP5, but I've not got the MP6, sadly. I'd like an MP6. I did history, drama, philosophy... And I started English Lit and then I hated it, so I dropped English Lit and I hated Sixth Form in general. So I did the first year of Sixth Form and then got a job as soon as I finished that. 
Um, I never took gradings. I got a, um, when I did GCSE Music, which is like, you know, the curriculum-based one at school, um, I think I got a B overall in that, but I got like A star for, for composing, and then I think it was like either A or B for playing, but then you also have to do like a listening exam for part of that, and that's where everybody lost marks. I think I ended up with a B overall in music. Um, but I never did piano gradings. Because you don't need to obviously take a grading, you just get sheet music and play, or play by ear. I like the earlier M16s aesthetically. Right, let's stop getting political, shall we, everybody? Um, well, there's, there's not an easy way you can send me a picture. Um, you can't post links in the stream. The only way you can do it, really, is if you post a link to a very common image sharing website um, in one of my videos and explain exactly what it is before you post the link, then I can check it out. Otherwise, no. Now the KV-1's a heavier tank, but the T-34 is better for mass production. Cool, do you make use of that um, lighting and sound tech diploma? Or is it one of those things where you've got it and then you just do a job completely unrelated to it? Even Stu, you right? Don't actually know what my favourite song is, that's a good question. Because I like quite a lot of different genres of music, I can't really answer that. All right, see ya. I've got an Instagram and I never use it. I just literally made it so somebody couldn't make an imitation account of me. Um, so I think every once in a blue moon I might upload a picture and I never check Instagram either. But I've technically got one that's weapons and stuff, 93. But yeah, it's, it's just literally there so somebody can't make an imitation account. That's cool. Well, good luck with that. Right, see you if you're off Aiden. Aiden. Bye. Well, supposedly the reason they ended up having to go to burst on it was just because of the amount of am ammunition soldiers were wasting in the fully automatic mode, just, you know, spraying it and not ever hitting anything. That's cool, Richard. Now, I said earlier on, I don't collect uniforms. Closest thing I've got to a full uniform is some of the old East German stuff, and I don't mind collecting that because it's a defunct country. But I don't like the idea of having like full military uniforms for the nations that still exist. Right, thank you, Henrik. Slowly getting there. Hopefully, in the next couple of years, I'll get to 100k subs, and then I'll get a silver play button if they even still issue those at that point. Then I could maybe put it somewhere on the wall so people could see it in a stream. Um, I like House of the Dead 1 and 2. I've got House of the Dead 3, I think it's on the original Xbox. Um, you know, where they had the amazing voice acting, like Suffer Like G did, or whatever the lines were. Um, the soundtracks are good to the House of the Dead games. But yeah, I've played House of the Dead 1, 2, 3. Oh, I've played Overkill as well. Overkill's pretty good, isn't it? But, um... Well, I couldn't afford to purchase a tank, and then if I did, where would I put it? I've got a model tank, but I don't think that counts, does it? I'm sure you mean a full one. Uh, Sten was very good for a mass-produced cheap SMG. Uh, the PPS-43 was probably the best of the cheap uh, World War II SMGs. Um, the Sterling that came along later is much better than the Sten, though. I've not ha got bought all that many more knives since I did the knife collection video, so until I get a decent chunk more, no. I like Count Dankula. I'm subscribed to him. His videos are pretty funny. Because all of my I don't upload all my videos on one day. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know that videos come out every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday when I'm not doing a live stream. So all these are is just videos that are premiered, and you can see the dates in advance of when they're coming out. Oh, there's a video on Flapjacks that's already on my channel. You can watch that one. Uh, 
Um, in reality, people did not urinate on the gas mask. That's all I'm going to say, because I know I, I get that quite often as a troll question. Supposedly, I've heard soldiers out of desperation would, like, pee on a handkerchief and stuff like that and shove it in their face during the very early gas attacks, but urine does not stop chlorine or anything like that. And the pH hood definitely did not have urine on it. It had... Um, I'll, I'll get the name of uh, what the chemical was um, on the pH hood. I'll probably butcher the pronunciation of it. Um, the P stands for phenate. Um, and the H is hexamine. So it was soaked in phenate hexamine, not urine. There you go. I obviously still like gas masks. Um, <clears throat> right, my workout tips aren't going to be very good because um, I sporadically exercise. I should exercise more. Because I work, because I've always done quite blue collar jobs, I get exercise in my job. But um, out of all the stuff I end up using the most, I end up using kettlebells the most, just because I find they're the easiest to, um, you know, like pick up and do stuff with. I've got like um, barbells and um, dumbbells as well, but I find kettlebells are like the easiest ones to use because you can just do quite a lot of different exercises with them. But, yeah, in general, um, most of the time I just do stuff through archery or whatever else. Or, you know, for messing about with swords or just work. I don't actually go out and exercise all that often. I don't go to the gym or anything. Ah, cool, which mask is that, Oscar? I've already told you my opinion on Russia. I said I've not got a problem with Russians or Russian people. Alright, cool. What manufacturer is it that makes that Colt BB gun? Unless it is Colt themselves. That 20 euros for an MP5 is very good. Most of the time they're about... Um, is it like 30 odd quid in the UK? Yeah, I walk dogs sometimes as well. I help my friend walk dog, his dogs. I, I like go, I like to go walking a lot, um, but yeah, in terms of actual like when people say exercise, and I assume they mean like cycling, weightlifting, and stuff like that. It's very sporadic, and most of the time it's only um, weightlifting I actually end up doing because I'm lazy. Okay, Cybergun then I guess is the manufacturer. Uh, well, it's not a pre-built computer, it's one I built myself. It's um, a Corsair case. can't remember the name of the case without looking. It's an FX9590 CPU. An RX480 is the GPU. And as I said, I'm getting a new PC this year at some point when AMD releases a 7nm CPU. So at that point, I'll actually get something a lot more modern. So I'm keeping a load of money aside for that at the moment. I've never been fishing, weirdly enough. Um, can you give me any details on it, XX Blaze? And then I might be able to explain to you, maybe, or I can have a go at guessing what it is, but without, you know... Yeah, the, the Stu, the Enfield I've got is the one that takes a sword attachment, because I've got the pig sticker, but it won't fit on that, because it has a different kind of bayonet lug, so I can't actually, um... Uh, I don't have one of those phantom cases, so I can't tell you anything about it. I work at a garden centre as a kitchen porter, quite close to where I live in, like, the restaurant cafe. Is it? What I like doing with weights is, let's say I'm um, watching a film. What I like to do is, if I'm sat down or stood up watching a film just on my PC or on in the living room or something, 
I like to just now and again do weights or do exercise while I'm watching a film. So, you know, you could be doing um, lifts or whatever while watching a film. And that, that way you're not getting too bored because you're at least watching a film at the same time. But you're getting a bit of exercise and I need to re get, remember doing it. If you're asking if a GP5 filter is safe, it's not because it's a GP5 filter. Uh, there's no reason they shouldn't use bayonets. Uh, let's see if I can get your profile picture up to a decent size then. It looks a bit like a GP9, but I don't know if it is. I don't think it is a GP9. Um, it looks like an industrial mask to me, rather than a military mask. But no, I don't know which exact model of mask it would be, I'm afraid, but it does look like a sort of industrial mask, I would assume. It says that in the description, Dark Ghost, if you read it. Uh, Polish MP5 filters are basically FP5 filters, as far as I'm aware, and yes, those are good, because they're the ones that fit NATO and Ghost masks. That's cool. Uh, if you read the description, Aaron, you can see about that in there. Let's see, Alex. Cool, see, so yeah, if it's from a factory, I guess it would be an industrial mask. I'm afraid I can't tell you what model it is. Yeah, I do pull-ups, actually, saying that. Um, pull-ups are quite easy to do, because especially if you go somewhere and there's a bar where you can grab on to do it, I generally end up doing a load of pull-ups on that before, you know, doing something else. I think it's just a private uh, Oscar. Unless you're talking to somebody else. Do you know if they actually have the same fittings, though, Stu? Because I know of a lot of things like that, that the fittings are different, and then they won't actually work as the original thing. Generally, airsoft things are of lower quality. That's not always true. Some might be good, but in general, i found airsoft gear tends to be sold at a massive markup, and it's not even as good as surplus. Yeah, we were talking about Dunkirk earlier in the stream. Yeah. Thank you everybody, please go like the stream like Maxi Boy says, that would be good. It helps me out. North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Like the Warsaw Pact was the um communist bloc military force. NATO was the like US funded one or US supported one. So NATO, although NATO's expanded a lot now in the Cold War, NATO members were primarily America, Britain, um, France, West Germany. Things like that. I think was Canada in NATO? I can't remember. Um, I think this was just from Amazon. Um, let me have a look. I'm pretty sure this model was from Amazon. Right, kettlebell. And this is a 12 kilo one. It's the Body Max series. Um... I think, looking at it, that looks the same as the one I've currently got. Um, the black 12 kilo one on Amazon is £21, and that's including the delivery. So it's not too bad. I've got a 40 kilo kettlebell as well, but I'm going to probably horribly injure myself trying to lift that. Let me show you it, if I can. Right, bear with me a second. I don't really do much exercise with this because I'm always worried I'm going to tear something. But right, let's get it out. I have to squat and lift this properly. Now, can you see this? I'm not going to try and lift it over my head because that would be stupid. Is that out of frame? That's typical, isn't it? If I stand backwards, can you see it? Maybe here.
That's typical, isn't it? Right, hang on a second. It it does exist, believe me. I'm not I'm not trolling you here. Let's move the chair a bit. Right, okay, so that camera is lower down now, isn't it? So Ah, oh, this is <laughs> this is quite funny. Hang on. Right, let me slide the webcam slightly more this way, if that will get the angle right. Then turn it down a bit more. Oh, I'll be fine. I know what I'm doing. I've I've gone the wrong way, haven't I? So I'm going to have to. Is it, will putting the webcam this way make it appear more the other way? Hang on. No, that's worse now. Right, okay. You should be able to see it now. So, I'll have to squat down because do not bend your back to pick up something like this. And there we go. As you can see, 40, if it zooms in on the 40. If I stand back here, it should definitely be visible. Yeah, there you go. See, I do actually own a 40 kilo one. Right, let me pop this back down. Put it back in its place. But yeah, for obvious reasons, the 12 kilo one is the one I actually exercise with more often unsurprisingly right let's get the webcam back to roughly where it was before there we go Right, I've been going for nearly an hour and 20 minutes, so I'll go for a little bit longer, but not too much longer. Yeah, because the only problem I've had to do with things like that before is the um, canteen I bought, which didn't actually work with British canteen lids. I wouldn't try and raise that kettlebell above my head. Um, I'm not dumb enough to do that. Um, I'm not strong enough to do that either. But yeah, I definitely need to uh, use it a bit more because I bought it a while ago. I was like, oh, that'll be fun getting a 40 kilo kettlebell, and then I barely use it because I'm always like, oh, too heavy. Yeah, well, I used to be a stock assistant, and I ended up getting, when I had a torn ligament in my back, that was because um, I had to move a washing machine, which weighed 70-odd kilos, with one of my co-workers, and he didn't, of course, follow his manual handling training, which meant um, he slipped, I had to take way more of the weight of it, so he didn't crush himself, and then I wrecked my back, and now and again I can still feel pain in my back from that. Yeah, that would really let rip, wouldn't it, if I picked it up and I needed to fart. Um, yeah, paint suit would work. Have you seen George Romero's The Crazies? Because in that, I think they just wear literally, like, paint dust over all things as NBC suits because they didn't have any budget for the film. Hello, Tumbo. I'm probably not going to be on all that much longer, though. Yeah, as long as you're, like, again, bending your legs, not your back, it's not too bad, is it? But, yeah, 
the problem is with with a lot of heavy stuff like that, if you do a weird movement, you can really, you know, cause a lot of problems. Well, I can't shoot one because I'm in Britain, but I'm, I hear it's a very good rifle. Uh, what about tomorrow? I will stream tomorrow, but I don't know the exact time yet. Normally I stream around 8pm on Thursdays, but it could be I stream a bit earlier or a bit later, depending on like what I'm doing, because I volunteer on Thursdays. And I don't know what time I'll get back from the animal shelter. And I try and make good quality videos. Thank you. Yeah, I'll definitely be streaming tomorrow, but the exact time I can't tell you at the moment. Because it could end up being um, 8pm UK time. It could be a bit before that, it could be a bit later, we'll have to see. Well, water is wet. I uh, sadly couldn't afford that. I like my Dacia though. That's the thing, military vehicles are one of the things I definitely couldn't afford. Because don't forget there's the whole running costs with those as well. It's not just the initial buying thing. You don't have to, you know, keep it roadworthy and everything. Um, I probably create, um, you know, commit less treason against um, Britain than our current politicians, but I'd rather not get this stream to be too political. All right, see ya. Yeah, especially even more when you think about some of the APCs and armored vehicles you can get. Um, you know, I'd love one if I could afford to run it, and it wouldn't be, you know, an issue. I would absolutely love some sort of old military vehicle. But, um, you know, that that's the thing, is that for practical reasons, I'd much rather have a cheap-to-run hatchback that just gets me from A to B. It's got a boot big enough to put stuff in, you know. Have you reviewed, then, um, Titus, any um, of Flint, Michigan's tap water? I hear that's not a very good quality. Do you have a little wine tasting glass as well? An excellent year. I'm imagining that scene from um, Roger Corman's The Black Cat with um, Peter Laurie and Vincent Price in the wine tasting bit. I'm imagining that, but I'm imagining him doing it with water. Um, shotguns are very practical. I don't know what, really what you want me to say about them. They serve a purpose. Well, sadly, Britain basically sold off all its L1A1s. It destroyed a load of them, deactivated a load of them, and sold off some. And then they had the problem where they realised they needed a 7.62 rifle back in service and had to run off and pay somebody to make them one because they got rid of all the fouls for a lot of nations that, you know, surplus their old battle rifles actually just um, modernised them a bit and put them back into service. But not Britain because we always do the wrong thing. Do you mean, when you say Thompson's, do you mean the uh, Thompson submachine gun? Because the problem with the US numbering system is so many things can be M1A1 or M1, like M1 carbine. But if you mean the Thompson submachine gun, they're apparently very nice, um, but the issue was with them that they were too expensive to mass produce in the Second World War, which is why the grease gun was developed. Um, and it's why Britain developed the Sten gun, because at one point Britain was buying Thompson submachine guns from America, but I think Britain could make something like 30 or 40 Sten guns for the price of one Thompson. It's a very good sniper rifle. Forgotten's we Forgotten Weapons did a load of videos on the uh, Accuracy International Rifles recently, which are worth watching. 
Uh, if Digital DPM95 existed, and it wasn't stupidly expensive, I'd buy some for shits and giggles, why not? But saying that, MARPAT is very similar to a Digital uh, DPM95, isn't it? That's an interesting thing to do, Mike, actually. Yeah, so thanks for that, because I didn't really have time to do that while I'm streaming myself. Right, there's less than five minutes left in the stream, so if anybody's got any questions, ask away. Um, I'd say Bren Gun. Um, because from my understanding, I know the bar is um, Browning Automatic Rifle, and it was designed to be a light automatic rifle, even though it's quite heavy. And the Bren's more of a light machine gun. Um, and I know that you could say that's British bias. I think the Bren is probably a bit more versatile with what you could do with it. I think both are very lovely rifles, but light machine guns, whatever you want to class them as. Um, but that's purely down to magazine, isn't it? You could probably put an extended magazine on most things. Because in, um, interestingly, in the Cold War, Britain um, re-chambered a load of the surviving Bren guns into 7.62 NATO, and then they could accept the SLR magazines. So SLR soldiers of the SLRs could hand the magazines to the Bren gunner to give them more ammunition. And then the um, you just literally put the 20 round foul magazine in the top of the uh, Bren. But my granddad said he was trained to um, strip, clean and put a Bren back together blindfolded, which is quite interesting. Um, I'm finishing the stream in about two minutes, so if you've got a question, you have to hurry up and ask it. I don't actually know what my dream job was when I was younger. When I did a lot of school stuff, I used to be quite good at IT stuff, so I did, I would quite like a, I used to quite want a job as an IT technician kind of thing, and then it turns out that became a really oversaturated market, obviously because so many people thought the same thing. And now I don't know if I'd actually want a job like that because it's annoying having to fix like family members' computer problems. So having to do it for an entire business or school or something would be horrible. So I, I quite like doing what I do at the moment. Working at the weekends, doing YouTube, you know, doing a couple of other minor things to supplement my income as well. Uh, was there like a badge they took off or something, Alex? That's the only thing I can think of. If it had like an emblem or a badge on it that's been removed when it was sold as Millsurp. Because on lots of jackets you can see a patch where they've torn off um, whatever kind of rank, in, rank or like division was, you know, the person's thing, if that makes sense. So that's the only thing I can think of is if it had a regiment's like badge or a rank badge on it or something and that's been pulled off. You've got like the dried glue on it where that was. That's the only thing I can think of. That's pretty stupid. Did you make him pay for it? I'd make him pay for it if he threw. If one of my friends broke one of my bits, they'd be paying for it. Yeah, I don't know what you mean. Do you mean like where they're militarising the police? Is that what you're getting at? I think to a degree they have to do that to combat terrorism. Um, and, you know, organised crime. But um, I'm not in favour of the police basically being a soldier kind of army type thing. Thank you, they're the ones I got a couple of weeks ago. Although, the first pair of these I had broke after, like, le less than a week of having them. Um, and these are my replacement pair, and they've been absolutely fine, because I think it was a design flaw in one of the frames. It's pretty similar to the Ray-Bans I had before, but they're not exactly the same. Oh, I have no idea what it is, then. Have you got a UV light? Because if you've got a, um, let me show you, I think I've got one. Yes, yeah, there it is. Because I use it to charge my watch up at night so I can 
do the thing. So yeah, if you've got a UV light, oh great, it's not going to work now for some reason when I want to show it on the video. Did the button get pressed in and has the battery gone flat? I don't know. That's going to be very irritating if that's not going to work. Now I want to show it on the stream. Give me a second. Uh, I'm short-sighted. There's not an easy way, as I was saying to some people earlier in the stream, of sending me stuff. Oh, there we go. Right, that's on. Okay, so, if you've got a UV light, like one of these, because, see, I can use that to charge my watch. I don't know if that's actually that visible on the thing. Oh, it's gone off again, is it? Just like the contact's loose or something. Hmm, that's really weird. I'll buy a new one at some point. I've had this one for years, but... Unless the end cap's not quite screwed on, right? That could be it. Or is the button broken in the end cap? Sorry, I'm getting distracted now. And I've gone over the time I wanted to go on because I was getting to this. But my point was if you've got a UV light, you can shine it on there. And sometimes with UV lights, you can actually... Weird, some substances will glow certain colours and then you can, you know, try and work out what it is that way. That's alright. I only go into politics stuff when it directly regards my hobby. Um, most of the time I try and avoid it. Right, that's irritating that this is now fucked. Um, anyway, I'll buy a new one of these at some point. Anyway, that will do for this stream. Uh, I don't know, you'd have to look that up online, Alex, to see what colour it would be for certain things. Um, but, in theory, you can use that to check. Um, I'm just going to quickly try something. I'm just seeing if I can swap the battery in there in case it's a battery problem, but I don't know. So yeah, I will literally be off in a minute. I'm just seeing if I can get this to work before I go off the stream. No, I think the button's broken in the top somehow. Like, you know, the one that makes the contact. I think that's... I think that's what's gone wrong on it. I do literally think it's the button isn't pressing in that makes the circuit work. But anyway, yep. Yeah. So I'll be going off. I guess this torch is broken. That's fine. I can replace it with another one. That's not an issue. Um, this is quite an old design now. It's not even a Cree LED design. Um, but yeah. See you then.